Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great summer. By now, I'm sure that most of you have seen this great video that the New York Philharmonic put out about a day in the life of their principal clarinetist Anthony McGill. Not only does it have rehearsal and concert footage of Anthony playing bolero, it also has footage of Anthony playing golf, being a dad, and riding the bus. It's extremely well produced. As a novice videographer myself, I was really impressed with how well it's put together. Go check it out if you haven't already. A few days after the video came out, our friend Norman Lebrecht at Slip Disc posted the video with a picture of Donald Trump and asked, Golf? And that's supposed to be 2018 cool? Naturally, a firestorm ensued in the comments section and spilled over onto Anthony's personal Facebook page and ultimately concluded on his Instagram with a picture of Anthony and Martin Luther King Jr.'s friend and confidant, Clarence B. Jones. The conversation was both fierce and fascinating, and since people from all over the music world are chiming in, I thought I'd throw in my two cents. So how in the world did we get from this to this? I have a dream. Let's look at how it all unfolded. So Anthony didn't like it when Norman questioned the coolness of golf. Anthony shared Norman's post and called it snarky, writing, I must say that I resent that folks feel like they have the right to say what we can and cannot do. I love golf. It's a great sport. I love classical music. It's beautiful. No big deal. It's a fun video. Notice the we is capitalized. I don't think that's an accident. I think it means we as in... Norman responded to Anthony as follows. Snarky? No. Just perplexed that a big city orchestra in search of a younger, more diverse audience should choose middle-class golf as a promo hook. Anthony then responded... Would you have preferred they show me playing basketball? The Bravo Vale videographers are friends of mine who know I love to play golf. They thought it would be fun and cool to show me doing something else besides playing the clarinet. This idea has been in the works for about 10 years, long before I was a member of the New York Phil. If you'd like to openly and constructively discuss diversity in orchestras and the lack thereof, that is wonderful, and bravo to you for wanting to be a voice for change. But I think it says a lot more about you that the orchestra and festival chose to promote the black principal clarinetist of one orchestra in a positive light as they did with other players from other orchestras all summer, and you chose to spin it negatively for clicks and hits. So there's a lot going on here. First of all, it looks like Norman was commenting under the false presupposition that this was a promotional video geared toward reaching a younger and more diverse audience. Anthony clarified the genesis of the video, though, and said it was just something he and his friends did for fun. Here in Nashville, our marketing department loves when musicians come up with social media content on our own, particularly content that makes us seem more human and relatable. After that clarification, Anthony advocated for a higher level discussion about diversity in the orchestra world, and Anthony is to be commended for this. It takes a lot to recognize the platform and influence of somebody you feel is opposing you, and that's exactly what Anthony did. The last part of Anthony's comment was, to me, the most interesting. Anthony must have felt like there was a racial undertone to Norman's post. Maybe it's because Norman used a photo of Donald Trump for the lead. People tend to conflate Trumpism with racism, and maybe that's how Anthony felt. Anthony called Norman's post negatively spun for clicks and hits, and I can see how the Trump photo could be construed that way. But that's kind of Norman's style. Remember how Norman borrowed a photo from Clarinet Job's Instagram for the story about Eric Abramovitz? <laughs> So later that same night, Anthony posted this photo to his Instagram with the following description. Since a friend just told me to drown out negativity with positivity, I'm sharing that I met this man Tuesday night at Music at Menlo. Talk about someone breaking stereotypes and doing what he loved. This American hero is a lawyer, Clarence B. Jones, and we should all know his name. Please Google him. He is a former clarinet player. After studying clarinet in New York in his teens, he quietly became not famous for being Martin Luther King Jr.'s personal lawyer slash counsel, speechwriter, confidant, and friend from 1960 until his death. We mostly talked about the fact that when he was growing up, he saw no one who played classical music that looked like him. His career went in a different direction. He kept MLK Jr. out of jail and was a super successful lawyer, but he didn't let barriers stop him. He came backstage to say hi and to meet a fellow clarinet player. It doesn't matter if it's golf, law, medicine, or music. The moral is, don't let stereotypes stop you from becoming who you want to be. Then there's a few hashtags. Greatness, American, black, law, music, clarinet, hero, inspiration, life, MLK. 
In this post, Anthony twice used the word stereotypes, and that is exactly what this exchange between Anthony McGill and Norman Lebrecht was all about. For Anthony, it's clearly about racial stereotypes, but I think Norman was trying to critique another stereotype, which is that classical music is often perceived as a stuffy art form that only the middle and upper classes can afford and appreciate. Orchestra marketers are always trying to make classical music seem more cool and more accessible, and I think Norman assumed that was the intent of this video, and therefore he thought that showing a musician playing golf might not be the best way to go about it. It could be said that Anthony was feeding another stereotype, which is that classical musicians have expensive hobbies and they like to do them in ritzy places like Vail, surrounded by people who have got a lot of money. I'm not saying there's any truth to that stereotype at all, but unfortunately, it does exist. This wasn't a promotional video, though. It's just a video of Anthony being himself, not Anthony trying to be cool. I bet you anything that when Anthony rhetorically asked Norman if he would have preferred a video of Anthony playing basketball, that Norman would have answered yes. And you know what? I'd agree with that, but that's only because I think basketball is a lot cooler than golf. However, I am not the arbiter of what is cool, and neither is Norman Lebrecht, and neither is Anthony McGill. What's cool is a very personal thing, and if you look to the masses to tell you what's cool, you're going to be disappointed. Especially if you're a young person playing clarinet in public school. It wasn't cool in suburban New Jersey where I grew up doing it, and I bet you in Chicago where Anthony grew up, it was even less cool. I gotta applaud Anthony here for putting himself out there and standing up for himself when he felt criticized. It's no small thing to put out a video of yourself during a rehearsal, especially when you're basically on summer vacation at 8,000 feet of altitude and you've been playing golf all morning. It's also no small thing to be an ambassador for a cause you believe in and to dedicate yourself to the shattering of stereotypes you feel are a hindrance to those who see you as a role model. The lack of diversity in orchestras is an issue, and Anthony, being one of the most visible clarinetists in the world, has done a lot to break down the boundaries in our business. I'm fully on board with his efforts, and in fact, during our contract negotiations here in the Nashville Symphony last spring, when we decided to leave our screens up throughout the entire audition process instead of taking them down for the final round, eliminating discrimination was a driving force behind that decision. So because of efforts like Anthony's, orchestras are evolving and becoming more inclusive. So hats off to you, Anthony, and keep doing what you're doing. I think this thing was kind of a misunderstanding between Norman and Anthony. I assume they're both hoping for the sustained viability of classical music, so they're kind of on the same team. Norman was a little critical, but that's what he is, a critic. Maybe he poked the hornet's nest just a little bit, but that's what you gotta do sometimes to get a good conversation going. As for me, whenever a clarinet player with a big job is being discussed on the most widely read classical music blog in the world, I'm all ears. Alright, that's all I've got. Thanks to Anthony for giving me permission to make his words public, and thanks to all of you for watching. Have a great rest of your summer, and I'll see you soon.